Hi, Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Falkner County Public Schools with a video update relative to the November 9th reopening of schools under the hybrid model. Uh, five pieces of information, I'll go through them quickly. Uh, one, the survey. We sent out a link Monday to a very short survey uh, relative to reopening and uh, the survey includes two questions, one about transportation and one about uh, choice between virtual or hybrid model uh, selection by parents. Um, I just want to accentuate the fact that it is very important that every parent in the school division complete the survey. Uh, the reason it is so important is because it, it allow us to do a accurate job of uh, determining bus routes, how many students um, will be on each bus, and it will also help us to, to balance class sizes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, very important that you complete the survey. Again, that information was sent, the link to the survey was sent on Monday. Um, second, hybrid slash blended instructional model. Getting lots of questions about the difference between blended and hybrid, there, there really is no difference. Uh, essentially what we did, we started off calling it an, a blended instructional model, but everyone in the world seems to be calling it a hybrid model. So we basically gave up and said, okay, it's our hybrid model. But the difference between blended and hybrid, there really is no different uh, difference. Um, however, I would point out that the model that we um, unveiled in July is essentially about 90% accurate in terms of um, our current plan. So we tweaked the plan and we presented in, in July. If you remember, it's about a five hour school board meeting and 88 slide presentation. Now we've since uh, tweaked it and fine tuned it based on what we've learned this fall, but it is essentially the same. Um, one of the uh, benefits, of course, as I've mentioned previously in, in providing virtual instruction the way we've, uh, the way we've um, prescribed is um, so we don't have to split our workforce between um, virtual and face-to-face. -face. Um, so that's um, one of the greatest benefits uh, of doing a virtual model the way that we're going to be doing it. Um, and it's going to allow us not to break up classes. So um, if you, your child was in a certain class this fall under the 100% virtual model, uh, can almost almost guarantee that the child your child will be in the same class same group once we go to the hybrid model so that's uh, the second part of my update uh, third part the virtual option so getting lots of questions about uh, what the virtual option will look like uh, let me answer you this way uh, the big picture answer is stationary camera focused in on the teacher teaching area live streamed not recorded we're not recording it because we don't if we record it it becomes an educational record we have to keep it forever and um, it, there are some significant privacy issues associated with recording classroom instruction that we want to avoid so the classes will be live streamed and so if a child's class starts at 8 30 in the morning then the expectation is that um, the students in that class are sitting in, if they chose the virtual model, are sitting in front of their, their uh, device at 8.30, participating in the class in, in real time. Very important. Um, questions about miss. What if, what if a miss? What if we have technology issues and we miss some of the instruction during a specific time if, I'm, if my child's in virtual? Uh, what do I do? Well, uh, the benefit to this our hybrid model is that if you miss it one day, you can log in, if you're an A student, you can log in on a B day and watch the same instruction. So even though it's not recorded, it's still the same lesson. Teachers will be providing the same lesson uh, for the A group and then again, same lesson again for the B group. So if you miss it and you're in the A group, you can always uh, pop in uh, uh, later in the week and, and watch the uh, instruction. So, um, Next, uh, more details to come about virtual. What we're going to be doing is making some videos that will sort of describe precisely what uh, the virtual instructional model looks like and um, what the, the, the nuances of a virtual instruction look like in terms of a live streaming classroom 
and strategies that teachers may utilize to um, draw students in, make them an active part of the classroom. That information will be forthcoming, um, and we'll, we'll be providing that in a form of uh, video updates and uh, some written, written information. Uh, the fourth piece is safety. So um, there's a lot of information that's going to be coming relative to uh, safety and um, that we've already provided quite a bit of information via the first go around uh, when we presented the hybrid model in July. Uh, you can look there. You can also look at the COVID-19 uh, process form that is um, included in the reopening website. Uh, at, Fauquier, at the Fauquier County Public Schools reopen. So it's actually fcps1reopen.org. You can go there. You can get the COVID-19 um, procedure information. There's also a dashboard now, a COVID dashboard on our website to provide up-to-date, uh, uh, real-time, transparent information about, um, you know, outbreaks or... Um, quarantining or any, any of those pieces that uh, we feel it's important to uh, make sure parents are aware of and staff are aware of within the school division. And so we've taken the uh, sort of unprecedented step of just putting a dashboard on the website so people can look at that information in real time. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit more about safety. So um, face coverings, uh, this is a question that's been coming up frequently recently. And yes, face coverings are going to be required. Uh, 100%. Uh, so at the time that you're, if your child rides the bus, when they get on the bus, the expectation is that they wear a face mask. When they're at school, they're wearing a face mask. When they ride the bus home, they're wearing a face mask, uh, face coverings. And um, if, a, if a parent or child refuses to wear fa a face covering, then we will invite them to participate in the virtual instructional model uh, rather than the face-to-face -face instructional model. Um, we're also going to be installing hands-free water fountains in, in our schools uh, so that uh, uh, students don't have to put their hands on water fountains when they need to drink water. We'll also be providing hand sanitizers, uh, as, as we, again, mentioned in July. Uh, that's, that is uh, something that we'll be providing in classrooms, in hallways, etc. We still will be uh, providing for social distancing. We'll also be providing signage within schools uh, to help maintain social distancing. Um, so there, more information forthcoming. Actually, we're putting out a pamphlet for parents um, to uh, check out, utilize um, as we're moving forward. But if you go back and review the plan from July, some of this information is included there. And then there's more information at the uh, FCPS1 reopen website, but we'll be providing even more information about more specifics related to school cleaning, for example, um, uh, face coverings, um, hand sanitizer, social distancing, etc., uh, etc. Et um, also, need to mention this. Um, this is the fifth, fifth and final uh, update. So we've added to the um, FCPS1 app, which if you haven't downloaded or added the app to your, your device, I encourage you to do so. The FCPS1 app is an excellent resource in a lot of different ways, but um, we're adding a checklist on the app that parents can utilize uh, when they do conduct their morning checks with their, with their children. And this is one of those things where we're really going to need parents' help. We're really going to need parents' buy-in. Uh, and we will need them to do these checks with their children before school every day. And um, the easiest way for you to do this would be to download that app, it will the FCPS1 app. It'll include a check, which it will now include a checklist that parents can uh, refer to. And we're, we're begging parents if any one of the symptoms that is uh, on that checklist is applicable to their child. In other words, it's positive, then you're, one of the things is fever. If your child has a fever, please keep them home. Uh, if it's, if it's uh, any one of those other things, please leave, keep them home. Uh, we don't want to end up in a situation where, for example, a child 
who is positive gets on a school bus with uh, 11 or 12 other students and uh, what that could mean of course is that those 11 or 12 other students would have to be quarantined also so we want to avoid that as best we can so please 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 help us out with that it's very important uh, we're looking at some other things uh, to um, to help prevent uh, uh, staff or students from coming into school uh, who may may be positive um, we were looking at other ways to identify those folks but right now um, it's really important that you utilize that app and, and go through that checklist with your child every day. Um, lastly, this is not one of the uh, updates, but I did want to mention that, um, I guess it is sort of an update. Uh, there'll be a meeting with ITRTs this Friday. And during that meeting, there'll be discussions about teacher training and uh, preparing teachers for the use of uh, cameras uh, while they're instructing students and strategies, best practice strategies that uh, can be utilized by the teachers. So there is a teacher training component that we're going to have to delve into to make sure that we get the most out of this, virtu this virtual instructional model. And um, so that's that. And now that's a lot of information. And I apologize for the length of this, but it's, uh, it, it is several important updates. And um, hope it's been helpful to you and uh, hope everyone stays safe and we'll be back in touch with you soon. Thanks.